keep going. Oh, 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 oh. I wake up again, for the second time, and all I remember is diving into the lake to save my soon-to-be ex-wife. Because if she is still alive, it's gonna be divorce time after I find her. It serves a right for dragging me to this backwood shithole. I realize that I'm drier than my wife's scratchy screw hole, and my head hurts like it does when I have to hear about her cramps or whatever. Then I notice that I must have wrecked my granny wagon all to hell. Great. I finally got to drive the damn thing, and I don't even remember it. On the bright side, though, I don't have to put up with the car or Alice for now. Whoa. I just realized I haven't even said Alice's name in over two years. I walk towards some kind of light because it's scary in the dark. Like super extra really kinda scary. I hope to find some friggin' answers in the light, but it's just two sheets of paper floating around the forest. The trees probably aren't happy to see me screwing around with paper. With my luck, they'll probably come alive, beat me to death with their needly branches, and then use my stripped flesh as some kind of tree diary. Like, day one, stood in the forest soaking up water. Day two, stood in the forest soaking up water. Day three, lumberjack cut Frank down today. We tried to put up a memorial for him, but we couldn't because we're trees. I wonder how hard I hit my head and try to read the papers. So I find a logging camp and ask a demonic, axe-wielding, otherworldly shadow figure for help because, you know, he probably has access to a telephone that he'd be willing to share. Excuse me, buddy! Hi! Do you speak English? Can I use your telephone? Telefono, por favor! I'll eat your soul! No, not eat your soul! Telephone! Telephone! I need to make a call, man! The weird logger dude doesn't seem to understand what I'm saying. So I run over to the logging Bears. office with them chasing me the whole friggin' way. I'm not sure why he did that. Cause I didn't even lock the door. He could've opened it right up and got me with that crazy axe, but instead he just gives up and disappears. What a pussy. I grab the gun and flashlight and then take two hits of acid for no reason. After my two second long bad trip, I ran to the gas station and called the sheriff, hoping she could help me with my insane problems. But the instant I see her face, I realize she's a complete bitch, just like my dumbass wife. I probably need to get psychological help because I hate women, but I can do that later. Officer, you gotta help me! This shit is some crazy shit! Calm down, sir! I think very, very carefully about what I'm going to say next so as not to provoke the officer. Please don't be a bitch about this, officer. I said calm down or I'll fucking shoot you straight in your neck until you die, you pedophile. I'm not a pedophile. Sir, you need to tell me exactly which felony you committed so I can shoot you for resisting arrest. I didn't do anything wrong. Okay, then. Why don't you show me what's going on so I can misinterpret it as a crime? Please, please don't. Don't do that. Hey, I'm just fucking with you, city boy. Come on, let's get you some help. We drive to the cabin where my wife probably drowned by now, and what I saw there was so unbelievable that I made a face indicating that I couldn't believe what I saw there. I looked back at the cup, then back to the lake, and I was all like, shit, because not only did I no longer have a wife or a car, but I no longer had a cabin either. I was a carless, cabinless widower, and I didn't know whether to cry or celebrate.